Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Crossmer. Now, today's question that we got asked was, what is the effect of seafood, specifically fish, when it comes to kidney disease and on kidney disease progression? And how does fish compare to other animal proteins, for example, red meat? So in order to answer this question, we're going to look at a series of studies to kind of illustrate looking at population models, looking at randomized control trials, looking at animal models to see if we can come up with some kind of a better answer for you guys. So let's get started. So the first study is from the British Journal of Nutrition. This is coming from 2011. And in this one, they were looking at omega-3. So remember, fish is a good source of omega-3 fatty acids, which are polyunsaturated fatty acids, specifically EPA and DHA. So in this particular study, they were looking at participants age over the 50. There's about 2,600 participants in there. And what they found was that those who had the highest intake of omega-3s had a 31% lower likelihood of having chronic kidney disease compared to those who had the lowest intake going on. So remember, this is a population-based study. It's correlation, not causation. Next is a journal, uh, 2017 study, Clinical Journal, American Society of Nephrology. This one was a meta-analysis of seven studies, 15,285 participants. And here's what they did a little differently. When they looked at the meat categories, they included things like red meat and other types of meat, but fish was actually lumped with the vegetables category going on. So that category was fruits, vegetables, fish, legumes, whole grain, and fiber compared with red meat, sodium, refined sugars. And there should be no surprise here, given the risk of meat and processed foods going on, that there was a 27% lower risk of death if you ate more of the vegetable category, which included vegetables and fish going on. Then let's look at the European Journal of Nutrition back in 2020. This particular study looked at over 4,000 healthy individuals, black and white race, 18 to 30 years old. The reason this was an important study was because they were able to follow these patients for 25 years. So this is a really long prospective study. And once again, what they showed was that higher intakes of long chain omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids were inversely linked with chronic kidney disease incident. How much? There was a 27% lower risk of developing kidney disease if you had higher intakes of specifically EPA and DHA going on. Then the next study was coming from the International Journal of Food Science and uh, Nutrition in 2013. This was more about looking at the fact that fish can have potassium, sodium, phosphorus going on. So you need to be aware of these things. And so they basically wanted to see what has lower phosphorus and higher EPA and DHA ratios. So in other words, the lower the overall ratio of phosphorus to EPA and DHA, the better they consider that. And those were fish such as parrot sand bass, black bullhead, broadbill swordfish, long jaw leather jacket, oil fish, Atlantic uh, triple tail, spotted scorpion fish, and round herring. Now, what was interesting was that if you look at round herring, for example, in each serving of 100 grams, there is 1,667 milligrams of EPA and DHA. That is a substantial dose of omega-3s that you're getting in 100 grams going on. Now, let's move on to another study. This one is looking at three small randomized control trial. This is from the Advanced uh, Pharmaceutical Bulletin 2016 going on. And here they were specifically asking the question, does omega-3 have any impact on one of the most common problems in CKD and dialysis, which is itching? So what they found was that in both, in all three of these randomized control studies, there was a significant improvement in itching or pruritus symptoms going on in those who took an omega-3 supplement versus those who took omega-6, omega-9, or took placebo going on. And then the last study was really an animal-based study, and this was looking at the idea of what if we took animals that already were susceptible to developing metabolic syndrome, liver and kidney dysfunction, and we had their diet being 100% casein or 75% casein and 25% baked cod filet. Would there be a difference in how quickly they develop kidney and liver dysfunction? So just substituting 25% of their diet 
with baked cod fillet actually reduced and delayed the development of both kidney and liver dysfunction. Okay, so that's a lot of studies to remember and recall. How do we bring all of this information together? What's the take-home message for all of you guys? So here it is. Number one, fish is definitely on the lower risk side. There is a lot of data that when you compare it to Western diets, fish is way healthier going on. What we don't know really is, is what if fish was compared strictly to a plant-based diet? Now, because of the concentration of omega-3s, there's a lot of beneficial aspects of fish. So if you're somebody who follows a whole food plant-based diet, just make sure you're taking some sort of algal oil or algae-based omega-3 supplements so you get the omega-3s in you. If you're somebody who follows more of an animal-based diet, this is a great opportunity to move away from red meat and go more towards fish going on. As always, thanks so much for checking out this episode, guys. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll be sure to address them next time. Thank you.